this. Gotta love a redneck swimming pool. On a day like today, we might be going in here later. All right, so here in the shop, we have our 2019 Ram Rebel. And, well, we do have some update too on our spacers. The company we were getting to make them apparently is not making them currently. They are just selling them. So any custom orders weren't getting done. Didn't know about that until about a week and a half after ordering them. So I do have another set ordered from Delaware. Hopefully they'll be here tomorrow and we can get our spacers put on. We will be doing another video on that with the install and kind of how everything's gonna work out. Hopefully we're sitting nice and flush just like our rear tire. Once that is all done, What's up everybody? Welcome to Hammerdown Motorsports. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Behind me we have our 2019 Ram Rebel project and yes we have been kind of working on a bunch of angles all at one time but it's about to come together hopefully. So here on the bench we do have our Aura Pro setup from Op7. I bought this on Amazon. I will have a link in the description if you guys are interested and today we're going to be doing our ambient lighting in the doors of our Ram Rebel. Now with this little system here, we have our OP7 Bluetooth module, nice slim design like this. We have a bunch of wiring and as you can see, I've used a lot of splitters and everything like that. There's actually only two outputs on this module and we've gone out to quite a few lights, but I think that is how it's all supposed to work because I mean, I've been testing these over the last few days, letting them run, nothing seems to get hot or flicker or anything like that. Everything seems to be working really nicely. Now how this works, we go into our OP7 app and then we have an on off switch. So we can turn them on or off. We can go, we don't have a color wheel. We have kind of this thing where you swipe up and down for different colors and then it switches. And you can also go to a white. So you get the nice bright white light there as well. And then if you just want to turn it down, you can go onto the brightness setting there. So you don't have super bright lights where you're trying to drive down the highway or something like that. You can turn them down, have a nice little ambiance inside the truck. Or if you wanted to go into full show mode, turn off the white, go into different colors. We can go into strobe, we can go into pulse, we can go into cycle, we can go into sound sync. So when we go to our music, we just go to the beat of the music. It's doing to my voice right now. Boom, 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 and it changes, which is kind of cool. So we are gonna be mounting this underneath our center console. This is gonna kind of coincide with our Switch Pro's installation. We have to mount the Switch Pro's module on the center console. I have a whole idea of how this is all gonna go. Hopefully this is all gonna work together seamlessly. So first step, let's get our door panels removed and then we can start installing our lights and start routing wiring and kind of see where this is all gonna go. And lucky for all its Rebel owners who paid $63,000 for a truck that doesn't come with ambient lighting, like the cheaper Laramie was $59,000 sticker, this was 63, no ambient lighting, no cooled seats. Yeah, we kind of got ripped off a little bit on that one Dodge, not gonna lie, or FCA, whatever you wanna call it. But they did leave us with the holes, so if you wanna put in your own lighting, you can. There's a little kind of, you can feel it with your finger, a little opening right here, so it's gonna shine on our door handle. There's another one right in here. You can feel it, and yeah, I know it's there. But either way, there's another hole in this section here. It's gonna allow light to kind of go in this little mat pocket kind of area. And also on the bottom here, there's this channel here where the Laramie and the Limited, and I'm not sure all which models have it, but there is light that also shines in there. And it actually looks really nice at night. One of the things I do miss about a Laramie, I think if I could choose the two things, it would be the ambient lighting and the cooled seats. But we can't have everything, but we can have color changing illumination in our door panels after this process is all done, if everything goes as planned. So let's get this door panel off and get started. So first step, we're gonna access the bolts that are holding this door panel on. You can see there's a little kind of notch on this panel. I'm just gonna get a seal pick in there. Pull that guy off, set it aside. We've got our two, looks to be 10 mils there. And then there's another one kind of on the bottom of this panel. Just gotta fight me, don't ya? There we go. All right. So there's this little clip right here, which just kind of sits like that. And this clip definitely didn't want to let go, but just keep that in mind. But they do have this little notch right here. So you can get a pick underneath there without gouging and all the nothing. So we've got a bolt here, two bolts here, and I believe the rest is just clips. 
And I think the door handle actually runs on a cable. So we're gonna have to kind of cross that. Once we get the panel removed, it's gonna bolt out and see how this panel comes off. All right, so the door panel is removed. It's actually not as hard as it looks. It basically is just all those pins that go all the way around that are just kind of snapped into place. And then we do have the three bolts that I showed you guys earlier. And this is our cable for our door handle. There's two little parts you just want to push together to get it out of the door panel. And then it's really easy just to unhook the cable. Not really a big deal. I just used these right here, just a little bit of needle nose pliers. Just kind of pinch those two little plastic clips. It pulls out of the door panel. Just connect the cable. And then over here we have our door lock. That just pops out of the door panel and just slide it out through the hole. And then we have our electrical connector right here. Just kind of push the release tab push it down. It's a little bit tight in that area to get it out, but not terrible. It was definitely doable. And amazingly enough, we have a blue speaker. Who knew that? All right. So I went through the trouble of taking all of the bolts around this inner panel off. And I'm not sure if there's something tied in with the window regulator and everything inside here, but it doesn't seem to just kind of want to come off really nicely. I'm sure there's something else going on inside there. And for our purposes, I really don't need to kind of get into that any further. So skip the step of taking all of these bolts out and just go remove your fancy blue speaker and it'll give you all kinds of access to that point. I mean, it was looking me right in the face. I should have done that in the first place, but we can learn as we go on here. So as I dove a little bit deeper into our wiring, this actually has a connector that goes through our B pillar where everything kind of connects. I've got the inner panel off here. You can see it's just got these little clips that hold it on and I moved the passenger seat up a little bit just so we can kind of pop that out of the way but you can disconnect our wiring there's actually two ports on this thing one has my wiring in it the other one is empty and there was a little gray clip in there which is this guy right here I just use my needle nose pop this guy out of there and being that we're not using this other section right here for factory wiring I believe what I'm gonna to have to do is just take a drill and just drill out what's not needed as far as these little locations for wiring, because, well, obviously they're never gonna be used for anything else. So we can run our wiring through that, and then it can come out to the B pillar and then figure out a way where we can get it underneath the carpet. And then we'll go underneath our center console for where our module is gonna be located. But this is kind of what we're dealing with, which is not really a big deal. It's just kind of figuring out where they put the wiring on these trucks and where we got to route our stuff to kind of work together with this whole system. All right, so we got our wire just routed here on the B pillar. You can see the connector that actually goes into our live wiring on this connector. And then you can see there, I use this drill bit here to kind of get rid of all that unnecessary plastic from that dummy plug that was there was just unused so no big deal about getting rid of that and that should leave us enough room just to get this part of our op 7 plug through that and then i gotta kind of figure out how i'm going to get that wire all the way through this loom and out the other side i think what i usually do is just use a piece of copper that i have laying around actually from the construction of our shop and I just kind of bend it in half so it's round on the one end then twist it up real tight so it's fairly rigid and be able to kind of work it through there without piercing any wires and hopefully that'll fish our wire through that loom so here you can see my makeshift fish tool i just took some copper twisted it up and you can see over here we can Got our little end kind of hanging out there. So now the fun part is to attach our wire to that in a way that it can pull it all the way through without disconnecting at some point. A lot of times what I do is just try to hook it into that loop the best I can, hit it with some electrical tape and just slowly kind of fish it through and hope for the best. So that was definitely worth an attempt, but it is just too tight to get the entire end of the plug to want to go all the way through this accordion style rubber and then to come out the other side, it's just a little bit too big for what's going on inside there. So attempt number two, I took the end of the plug off. It's pretty simple. There's these little tabs kind of right on these pins. You just push them down, it comes right out of the connector. Just remember the order that they were in. So they go back the way they're supposed to. And you just got to lift the tabs back up once you push them down. So they will lock back into the connector. But now we're a lot more low profile and this should go through here, hopefully. And there we have it, we have success. I just put a little electrical tape on here just to make sure that none of the ends were kind of gonna get pulled back or catch on any of the wiring inside there. Also, it makes it a little bit easier to get the tape off if you 
kind of just fold over the end of the tape so you know where the end is. So obviously we're gonna be taking this off right away, putting on the end of our connector, and we are ran along with our factory wiring. Everything is working out pretty good so far. And there we go, we have the connector end back on. Everything is now running with our factory wiring over here. So this can go back into the door. This other end can get reconnected. And then we can start kind of figuring out on our door panel, which is over there, we'll start mounting up our lights and figuring out where we're gonna route it through to connect to our extension and go on from there. So as far as our wiring goes, I just followed the factory wiring as it came out of that harness. And then I zip tied it right here, followed the bottom of the speaker bucket. And then right here, there's a little provision where another wire comes out from the factory. So I just took my LED wire, just kind of stuck it in there beside it. And then I put one more zip tie on the inside here where it's anchored, just so everything's gonna stay in place, not get caught on anything when the window regulator goes up and down and everything should work out nice. All right, so as far as our wiring on our door panel, I kind of put a little bit of thought into how to do this. I ended up using these, they're just little anchors, so you can put a zip tie through and then just take this protective covering off and you got a sticky side. Basically you stick this to any part of the door panel that you need to. And what I did is I used four of them right here to kind of get that channel lit up. And then I used an extension because I kind of wanted my wiring to start right here. This is where we got our extension going over to our module. But this is where it's gonna plug in that wire that we just ran through our factory wiring. And then I've got it anchored here as well. I got one extension going over to here so we can get that little hole in this kind of map pocket lit up. And then I ran it up over this way, up to where our door handle is. And there was one little spot on here that was kind of shining through a crack that, you know, this is why we test them so we can kind of see what it looks like before it's all installed on the truck. So I put a little piece of electrical tape over top of that just to keep that light from directly going through that piece of plastic. But if we put it up like this, you can see we used to have light coming through here and now we don't but you got the light coming down where it's supposed to be, right up there in the factory location. Then over here, we have that one going as well. And it's a little bit hard to see in the daylight, but we definitely have some light coming through in this channel here. That's gonna light up our lower map pocket here, and it's gonna look pretty cool at night. So now that that's all done, we can disconnect our extension here, get it back over to the door, and hope that none of the stuff that we added here is gonna be in the way of anything on the door panel, but I think we're gonna be okay. All right, so we have our wire hooked up just to our system over there, just for testing purposes. Check this out. We've got our red light in the bottom here right now. Red is my favorite color so far, just because it goes along with our whole red and black theme. You can see we got lots of light here on our door handle and we've got just a little bit of light coming in here it's really kind of hard to see in the daylight but we're going to close the door i'll go around to the other side kind of show you guys what it looks like when everything's closed up oh yes check that out for just a little bit of ambient lighting in here it just totally does the trick and it's really nice that the factory already had the holes there and at the same time, it would have been nice if the factory put them in, but now we get to change colors and do pulse to the beat of the music and kind of the whole thing. You can really customize it for your own taste. And I think it's going to work out a whole lot better. But at the same time, it is a whole lot of work to put them in. But at the end of the day, it's going to look pretty awesome when we have all four doors complete. And I gotta be honest, I actually do like the blue as well. It kinda gives you a little bit of contrast there, but it is so easy just to go into the app, change the colors, have them cycle, do whatever you want to do. And if you're into LED lighting like me, it's probably worth your time to kinda take this all apart, route your wiring and all that kinda thing, just so you can have this kind of effect because, well, without the work that goes into it, you're not gonna have a result, but obviously the result for me is definitely worth it and it looks absolutely amazing. Can't wait to have them all done, everything mounted, wired up, ready to go, and we can continue on with getting everything else attached that we've added to this truck with the Switch Pros module. Get our front spacers on, and this truck is getting pretty far into the build at this point. We're gonna have our light bar functional. I'm actually gonna put two more lights on either side just for kind of side spots. That's kind of what I've decided to do with these radiance lights, these ones that have like, this is actually a picture of a blue one, but these are red and you can have a red backlight and then a spot. So if I'm driving out on the beach, I'm gonna have my light bar for the forward light and then I'm gonna to try to angle these as far this way as I can so I can kind of get a little bit more kind of ditch lighting 
and you're not going to be able to see it because it's going to be behind the grill. And then as a second function, it's going to have the little red backlighting. So you're going to have a little bit of kind of an accent light in the front of the truck as well. Kind of give it a really cool effect. And yes, everything is starting to come together on this truck and I can't wait to have it all finished. So once you've gotten to this point with a build and yeah, well, we've added lighting and we've added lift kits and tires and wheels and horns and pretty much everything I could tastefully want to put on this truck at this point, there's always more stuff being made and always, I don't want to overdo a vehicle. I like to hit that fine line of not going too far where it's like, well, now I think there's, there's just too much going on and it doesn't make sense. The Camaro, for example, started out with some pretty basic stuff. So some bolt-ons, we put a ZL1 grill on, just got rid of the gold bow ties and so on and so forth. And over time, well, we kind of did pretty much everything I wanted to do on this car. We got a supercharger on it. It has exhaust, it has headers, it has all kinds of stuff. HP tune. I, I basically could stand here for 10 minutes of telling you all the different things that I've done to this car, but I think it's kind of gotten to the point where I'm really, really happy with the way it looks. It has LED lights everywhere. It's got underglow, underhood glow, louver glow, and I think I have maybe a problem with LED lights. But that problem seems to be not having enough of them. So that's why we're adding more to the Rebel. And yeah, I hope it's gonna look awesome when it's all done. Can't wait to share that with you guys. Can't wait to get everything functional and working and go out on the beach, play with this thing once everything opens up again. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And as always, keep that hammer down. Perfect.